thanks very much for being with us. It's a pretty damning indictment of years of Conservative government, of your party's government. Uh, the government of David Cameron, Theresa May, Boris Johnson, they haven't done enough, have they? It's something that goes back decades. It is a, a really tough uh, report and straight talking typically uh, as the Education Select Committee often is. I think it's really important actually to recognise some of these educational inequalities that exist in communities like the one that I represent that haven't been tackled, um, where we're very good at talking about the number of children who are improving their outcomes and improving uh, their GCSE results, for example, but not about that proportion of kids uh, at the bottom who aren't and are therefore falling further behind. And why do you think white pupils from poorer backgrounds in particular are doing badly? Well, there are a variety of challenges. What the, uh, the report says, and it echoes what was in the Race Disparity Commission report a few months ago, is that there's a variety of factors here. It's not uh, about race per se. It's about all sorts of uh, geographical, cultural, uh, generational engagement from, from parents, kinds of factors. Um, but a, a huge proportion of these young people um, come from families who don't have uh, a history in education who haven't been to university who haven't got high level qualifications and therefore it's really difficult for those families uh, in many ways to support them and for, for the most disadvantaged kids um, those whose you know parents aren't able to offer them the kind of cultural capital the help at home even with basic uh, numeracy and literacy it's a real challenge before you even get started so let's let's cut to the chase how much does the government need to spend on education to level up and to help these pupils well, I don't think it's right to say let's put X figure on it. I think the, the key point is as we get to levelling up white paper coming this autumn, that education skills is a huge part of, of what that looks like in terms of the future. If you want to make a long-term impact, it's not just about building nice buildings, it's about uh, how we improve skills and employability uh, for the most disadvantaged people. I think uh, we're doing some of that around the skills bill and how we're focusing more on further and technical education uh, through the DfE at the minute. But certainly, uh, in my view, there needs to be a lot more done around um, those kind of more personal experiences, supporting families to be able to help their children to learn and engage with school, more extracurricular activities, uh, work, uh, things like youth work that support people to develop as people, uh, as well as just the academic side of it. And sometimes I think that that's what's missing. Well, I mean, you say it's not about money, but if you talk to lots of teachers, they would say it is about money. It's about more investment in schools. I said it wasn't right to put a, a figure on it and say it's X. I think definitely, you know, there is, if you're going to invest in anything, uh, young people in education has surely got to be the thing. And I think government's committed to doing that through their kind of levelling up agenda. The well, they've talked a lot about that, but, but not put figures on it. And you're not putting figures on it either. Well, we've, uh, to take Mansfield as an example, we've had um, uh, a town's fund uh, bid, which includes uh, elements around skills and training, working with our local college. They're locally decided projects where we've been able to choose to focus on skills and education. I think there's a lot more to be done, and it will require funding, particularly in early years, because, I mean, one of the big factors here is those most disadvantaged children, uh, white children, are, are um, half of them aren't meeting basic standards uh, that we'd expect by age of four or five. Uh, so you've got to get in there early, and there needs to be more done uh, around nurture, around early years education. But the key thing, I think, that comes out of this report is that it's not just about schools. It's about supporting families. It's about a cultural shift and supporting uh, parents to be able to help their children with, ed with education and with uh, ambition and aspiration that they've not necessarily experienced in their own lives. You're talking here about uh, disadvantaged children from disadvantaged families. A lot of people listening to you would say, um, is this the same person who has talked in the past about a vast sea of unemployed wasters, about public sector workers who don't know they're born, suggesting that free school meal vouchers effectively hand cash to crack dens and brothels? But look, those who want to pay attention to what I actually say and work on in Parliament, they'll recognise this is something I've been talking about uh, and pushing for an awfully long time. I'm thrilled that this has come to the Select Committee and is being taken seriously because it hasn't been uh, for many decades. This is the work that I'm doing. And if you want to uh, take many years of working and pushing uh, this agenda and throw it out the window because of a couple of daft tweets, I think that's, uh, that's an error. Well, a couple of daft tweets, but there's a track record of daft tweets, isn't there? If you want to go back to when I was a teenager, I think you know you can you can choose to do that. Personally, uh, I would like to focus on what comes out of this report, the recommendations um, that are really important to our levelling up agenda, that are really important to supporting young people. And as I say, that particularly those uh, at the bottom of that academic outcome uh, agenda, those who are struggling most to fulfil their potential, that's about how we invest in people. It's about how we support families. It's about how we help uh, schools to deliver on basic numeracy and literacy. Um, 
really positive recommendations in this report and input from teachers in my own constituency who have been really constructive. Uh, I'm pleased to see it and I look forward to government's response. Uh, ben Bradley, thank you very much. Conservative MP for Mansfield.